All right, we started. Look at that, showing you the bird again so you can be all excited that we started in the same place, okay? So gene flow can increase the fitness of a population. Consider, for example, the spread of alleles for resistance to insecticides. <gasps> okay? Insecticides, bacteria, pests, works the same over and over and over again. There are a couple of them that make it, and because they had a little genetic variation and they made it through the insecticide, so they are the only ones that reproduce, then the next generation has that gene to be resistant to whatever that insecticide is. So, here we have, insecticides have been used to target mosquitoes that carry West Nile and other diseases. They have evolved in some populations that confer insecticide resistance to these mosquitoes. The flow of insecticide resistance alleles into a population can cause an increase in fitness. Same thing, they just use bigger words, okay? Gene flow is an important agent of evolutionary change. Yes, they said that because you can't have gene flow if you're going to have and reach Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. Oh, good, that was the cat. Uh, he's got an itch. Sorry, either that or an earthquake. All right. So evolution by natural selection involves both chance and sorting. New genetic variations arise by chance. We already discussed that. Beneficial alleles are sorted and favored by natural selection. Remember, if it's advantageous in the environment that you're living in, you will be able to reproduce more because you're healthier. Therefore, those genes that allow you to be um, more reproductively viable in the environment that you were in at the time allows your offspring to then have those genes. So only natural selection consistently results in adaptive evolution, an increase in the frequency of alleles that improve fitness. Okay? It brings about adaptive evolution by acting on an organism's phenotype. You can look recently, going back to, say, brown bears, and look at, over the past couple thousand years, how they evolved into polar bears. It was advantageous for them to be whiter and blendy during the winter. Brown, those seals could see them coming, right? So the phrase struggle for existence and survival are misleading as they imply direct competition among individuals. Reproductive success is generally more subtle and depends on many factors. Okay, they're not all duking it out, okay, just to see who's the best one. I mean, some are. So relative fitness is the contribution of an individual makes to the gene pool of the next generation, relative to the contribution of other individuals. So in other words, the more an organism has offspring, that's the relative fitness, compared to a relative fitness of zero of an, an individual that has zero offspring. Oh, thank goodness, I'm getting, you know, it's hard for me to sit here and just, you know, talk to the cell phone. Thank goodness the cat is responding. It's like, you know, having a conversation with just one of you paying attention. Yay. Or he's chewing on the box. I don't know, one or the other. Okay. So here we have, and you need to know these and be able to visualize the graphs which they're attached to. Okay, we're gonna see graphs. Please make sure you can, you know, pick and put with the correct graph. So directional selection occurs when condition is in favor of individuals at one end of the phenotypic range. So you'll see a graph, it'll have this, and it'll be like moving in a direction, okay? Disruptive selection is not the two cats playing with the box now at this point, but disruptive selection is when you have a graph, why I'm making visuals, because there's going to be pictures, and then the graph kind of breaks in two. And then you have stabilizing where the graph is this big and now the graph is this big. So disruptive when conditions favor individuals at both extremes. Stabilizing occurs when conditions favor the intermediate variants and act against extremes. So the, um, the average becomes more the norm. So here we have the original population. Please note them. Directional, we're talking about mouse, we're talking about fur color. Mouse, I don't know what it is. All right, so here we have the original population and this is the directionist wind where it went. Here it disrupted it, so now only the dark and the light mice, and here only the average mouse, brownish. So please be able to, if you had pictures of the graphs, could you pick out of multiple choice which ones they were? The answer better be yes. I'm just telling you now. 
Because, you know, at some point, maybe, you know, we'll have another test. Or you'll have an AP exam, or you go to college and, you know, there'll be a test. Who knows? So, striking adaptations have origin by natural selection. Certain octopuses can change color rapidly for camouflage. The jaws of snakes allow them to swallow prey larger than their heads. You can Google that. YouTube it. Snakes swallowing things. Oh, or you, I can turn the page. Okay? Because they got that little ligament and it's unhinges. It has to be twice the size. What they should have eaten an egg, not like, you know, a little mouse or something or a bird. Freak there. Oh, look, it's nice and close. Oh, uh, oh kind of makes me want a Cadbury egg. No, no, no. Okay. All right. Natural selection increases the frequency of alleles that enhance survival and reproduction. Adaptive evolution occurs as the proportion of individuals in a population that have traits favorable for the particular environment increases. Because the environment can change, ta-da, we know the environment is changing. In case you weren't paying attention. You are now that you're stuck in your house watching me do this. You're paying attention now. Adaptive evolution is continuous and it's a dynamic process. So genetic drift and gene flow don't consistently lead to adaptive evolution as they can increase or decrease to match between an organism and its environment. So balancing selection. A natural selection maintains stable frequencies of two or more phenotypic forms. Example, heterozygous advantage. Wait, 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 heterozygous advantage? What's the one thing I tell you whenever there, we have to remember, we have to remember, we have to remember? Sickle cell. I know, and here it is again. You need to learn all you can about that because you can use it in like 90% of the questions we're gonna ask you. Okay, frequency dependent selection. Heterozygous advantage occurs when heterozygous have a higher fitness than do both homozygous. For example, sickle cell allele causes um, bad mutations in your hemoglobin but also confers malaria resistance. So this is great for if you're in areas where there is malaria, not so great if you live in, I don't know, Iceland. Or it used to be South Florida, but I don't know, with all those mosquitoes moving up, who knows what's happening. Okay, here it's showing you how this works. This is way better than the one I drew on the board. I know my drawing was not bad, but you know. There it is closer. Oh wait, if you look, oops, sorry, look. This is it. The one amino acid that's changed. Not, I'm, I'm sorry, not amino acid. All right, the one nitrogenous base that's changed. One, one, okay, right down here. They're switching an A for a T. That's it. And you're like, they even hook up, but in, yeah, that makes a difference. Okay, and here's our mosquito. That's Chester, in case, shh, I'm talking. Not you, you're not contributing at all to this. He's not done, I'm sorry. He's playing with a piece of fuzz. It's like having an announcement. There are mosquitoes. they are children with sickle cell. Okay, so the next one that they mentioned was frequency dependent selection occurs where the fitness of a phenotype depends on how common it is in the population. Oh, and they're talking about fish. Which side of their mouths open? When a left-sided mouth fish becomes more common, the advantage is reversed. Really? They couldn't give us something that we could like look at and go, oh yeah, I get that. Please let there be a picture. There is, oh look, see? Right-sided, left-sided. You do not need to know that. Would you need to read the graph? Yes. Would you need to be <laughs> Really, that's the best, okay. I'm just gonna move on. Balancing selection due to frequency dependence keeps the frequency of each phenotype close to 50%. It makes sense, balance 50%, you could put those together. Even if I didn't tell you anything, you should be able to make those types of associations when you're taking higher order tests. So, sexual selection is natural selection for mating success. This is the fun part. Man, our lab, we're, oh, I hope we do it. Even if, even if we come back for like three days, I think I'll throw this lab in because it's that much fun. All right, it can result in sexual dimorphism, marked difference between the sexes. 
So sexual dimorphism, if you see a, like the grackles that we have that attack you at lunch, the big dark um, black purple ones, those are males. The brown ones are females, sexually dimorphic. Male and female lions. You can look at one and go, I know which one's a male, I know which one's a fa female, sexually dimorphic. Okay, that's what they mean by that. Peacock, peahen. If he's not pretty enough, he, he doesn't get any of that. That's how it works with sexual dimorphism. The males are forced to become more and more whatever it is. He has to look pretty and put on a dance, okay? Some birds have to build nests. You know, there are different things that there's the head budding thing with